is for education and entertainment purposes only. Please consult with your healthcare provider before making any changes to your health plan. Hey, beautiful soul, it's Jacqueline here from the Lost Libia Chronicles in partnership with Lichen Sclerosis Support Network. If you have lichen sclerosis and are looking to empower yourself with information, find acceptance and reclaim your life, then please subscribe to this channel and keep on watching. And if you have a friend or family member or loved one with lichen sclerosis, and you want to learn more about the mental and physical health aspects of living with LS so that you can better support them in their journey, then please subscribe to my channel as well. And please share my content with them. All right, so today we are going to be talking about all things periods, period care, and lichen sclerosis. So this topic, we're going to do a little shorter video today, but it is one that is highly requested because many folks with lichen sclerosis struggle with menstrual hygiene products, right? A lot of us find that, you know, some of the available options out there just irritate us more and make us itchier. Some folks will say, you know, it caused a flare or it triggered, you know, a big spike in their symptoms. And so I thought we would sit down and kind of review the different product options out there, talk about some of the hard no's and what, you know, is really recommended. Now, just as a bit of a disclaimer, um, this video is more anecdotal. So I'm drawing on personal experience and having been in the LS community for years now and talking to hundreds of people with LS. The reason it's more of an anecdotal slash experience kind of based um, video is because there's not a lot of literature on this, right? A lot of the scientific literature really focus heavily on diagnosis and treatments, but not so much on these lifestyle pieces like menstrual care and LS. And so for that reason, I thought I would fill in that gap and make a little video about that. So as always, if you find the information in this video helpful, please leave me a thumbs up and please feel free to share your favorite period hygiene products in the comment section below. I love hearing from you and sharing is one of the best ways that we can kind of learn and grow together as individuals and as a community. Okay, so let's start off like super duper strong here. Let's talk about what to avoid. Are there any products for menstruation that you should just straight up not even bother with? There's a few. There's not too many because a lot of this is going to be how does your body react? But some things that kind of fall on that hard no are panty liners. Now, panty liners are one of the things that I've found that every single dermatologist and gynecologist that I've heard speak agrees on. Do not use these. They will irritate the vulva, especially if you have lichen sclerosis. So I would say that especially if you're symptomatic and prone to irritation, personally, I would just avoid these. The second thing to avoid is scented products. So a lot of pads and tampons have a scented version. Um, you know, they might smell like daffodils or soft rain or cotton, like not cotton, like a uh, fresh laundry, or I've seen things like daiquiris and like margaritas and, and everything, you know, under the sun. If they're scented as a general rule, again, most gynecologists and dermatologists will say avoid them. The perfumes and scents in these products can be really irritating and for some folks lead to, you know, infections and an increase in their LS symptoms. So for that reason, it's a good thing to avoid those ingredients in your menstrual products. Similarly, another thing to avoid is products that include bleach or chlorine. Again, bleach and chlorine can just be um, more irritating to some people, especially if they have an underlying vulval vaginal condition like lichen sclerosis. Um, so bleach and chlorine are things that are often, again, added into pads and tampons. So you might just want to look for bleach and chlorine free alternatives, just like you would look for a scent free alternative to a scented tampon or pad. Finally, the last thing that I would say to avoid is obviously anything that your body seriously reacts to in a negative way. So if you use a pad and it's unscented and it doesn't have chlorine or anything like that, and you use the pad and then you've got a huge reaction afterwards, like we're talking massive irritation and soreness and rawness, 
then I would say to discontinue that use and try to find something that is more gentle and more agreeable to your body. So those are the only really, I think, like avoid or like hard nose. And, and even then, I think there's some flexibility there. You know, it's all about finding what works for your body. But definitely if something is causing a strong reaction, I absolutely personally would not continue to use it. And I would try to find an alternative that worked better for my body. So let's start with tampons. Tampons are a really popular choice for many menstruating folks, probably because of their convenience, right? They're small, like, well, they're not that small, but they're small. Um, you can stick them in your purse. You can wear them on the go. You can wear them in the shower or if you're swimming, right? They're just a really convenient way um, for menstruators to kind of absorb the blood during their menstruation flow. Um, that said, Tampons, from what I hear in the LS communities, seem to be really high up there as one of the hygiene products that tend to really cause a lot of irritation. So a lot of people find it makes them more itchy. Um, they'll find that the string irritates the vulvar tissue. There's a lot of people that say that they find them really, really uncomfortable. And if you happen to have a secondary condition on top of your LS, like vaginismus, then these can be incredibly painful to insert, right? For people with vaginismus, a tampon will cause a tremendous amount of pain and they might not even be able to insert that. So that might not even be an option for you if there's pain with inserting a tampon. Um, so for that reason, that would definitely be an avoid one. Of course, if you are okay with tampons and don't have any issues, you don't find them irritating to you and they work super well for you and your lifestyle, then by all means, do what works for you, do what works with your body. Um, if you're looking into trying tampons, then just again, make sure that they're scent free, chlorine, bleach free, and all of that. Now, just because I always share a little bit of my personal experience in these videos, um, I, I don't use tampons anymore, except in really rare cases when I absolutely need to. And now that I'm in remission, I don't find that tampons bother me anymore. But I will say that when my symptoms were active, when my LS was active and I was really itching and I had fissures everywhere, tampons were awful. And I even got the unbleached, you know, unscented ones and my body still just was not having it. Uh, but at the time, I also didn't know I had LS. I didn't know what was wrong with me. I also didn't know that there was a whole, you know, array of different period products out there. I kind of grew up thinking like pads or tampons. I didn't realize there were other options. Um, but yeah, so I don't really use them anymore unless I'm like traveling a long distance and it's more of a convenient thing. But when I do use them now, I don't have any issues with them. But again, that's just me. Honor your body always first and foremost. Now let's talk about pads for a second. Um, and most gynecologists will say no panty liners, but pads are technically panty liners, but like thicker. Um, so again, with pads, I will say that almost everyone that wears pads with LS in the LS community that has spoken about their experience will say that pads are the worst, that they are very, very, very irritating. Um, and most people end up ditching those very, very quickly. But again, if pads is the best option for you and that works for you, then by all means, do what is good for you and your body. Um, maybe just try and make sure that they're not scented or you know got, have chlorine or anything like that. I will leave a link in the description box below. Um, I do have some recommendations for like non-bleach, non-chlorine pads and tampons, as well as other menstrual products. Um, so I'll leave the link. I do have an Amazon storefront that you can check out. Um, I do have a category for kind of menstrual products. So you can see if there's something there and or of course you can go online and find many of these things as well. It's just to see, you know, it's just about what's convenient for you, honestly. All right, let's move into some products that get better reviews in the LS community. So I would say that by far and large, if I like surveyed the LS community and the trend that I see the most is that most people find success or find that their best option is a menstrual disc or a menstrual cup. 
So I'll pop a couple images up on screen so that you can kind of see what I'm talking about if you're new, but they're basically really flexible um, discs or cups that you can kind of fold up and then insert and then the blood kind of pools in those and then you remove them. Um, so I have personally never tried a disc or a cup um, and you'll find out why in a, in a, in a few minutes. Um, but by far and large, like everybody that I say, you know, that comes to me and is like, I'm struggling with tampons, like they're not working. And I ask them, have you considered a disc or a cup? And a lot of times they say no. And then, so I recommend them a brand and the brand that seems to be like the best brand for folks with LS is a brand called Salt, C-A-A-L-T. They are also in my Amazon storefront. If you wanted to check that out, I have an Amazon storefront for Canada and the US. If not, you can probably just Google like salt menstrual cup and look at the product options there, but they definitely seem to be the ones that cause the least amount of irritation and, um, and flares and just symptoms in general. So they seem to be a really good option, especially if you have a bigger flow or a longer flow and you definitely need something to be absorbing and holding that blood. All right, little warning. I know this one might make a few people cringe. So if you are cringe with kind of body stuff, uh, maybe just skip a minute or skip to the next chapter. I always do chapters in my YouTube videos. Um, so the next option is to free bleed. Um, that means that actually you would not use any kind of menstrual period uh, product. No cups, no discs, no pads, no tampons nothing you just let your body do its thing so remember when i said i don't use cups or discs that's because i choose to free bleed now the reason i don't do cups and discs and the reason why i choose to free bleed it's a very much a personal choice and it's very much based on my body so i actually have an incredibly light period i mean really light i only really bleed for like the first day and then the next two or three days are like light brown spotting um and my first day where i do bleed it's very very light very minimal so i'm not working with a heavy flow here so i just want to be really clear about that because i think that how i approach you know menstrual care products as a person with lichen sclerosis would be very different if i had a heavier flow but because it's so light and because I work from home, right, all the jobs that I have, I do them all from my house. So, you know, this might be different. I might not choose to free bleed if I had to go into the office, but I don't. I get to be in the comfort of my own home. So I just let things be for that like day. And then I just kind of spot for the next few days and then it's done with for me. Um, so that's why I choose to free bleed. I know a lot of, well, a lot. That's a over, that's, it's a bit of an exaggeration, but I definitely know folks um, with and without LS that choose to free bleed. Um, this is sometimes um, a financial kind of decision, right? Because menstrual products can cost money. Uh, that said, things like menstrual discs can be good because they are reusable. Unlike a tampon, which you have to immediately get rid of after using it, the menstrual cups, you know, and the discs those can be reused. So that can be more financially sustainable long-term. Um, and obviously free bleeding costs nothing because you just let your body do its thing. But again, I just want to acknowledge that, you know, part of why I choose this option is really just because my flow is so light and because I can just stay at home when I'm on my period. So I know that that's not an option for everyone. So if that's not an option for you, you can potentially look at the discs or period underwear. Okay, so period underwear, and somebody please correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I think these are more of a newer product in terms of kind of the history of menstrual care products. I think for you know the longest time, it was kind of traditionally pads and tampons, and then later the menstrual cups, and then discs kind of came onto the market along with period underwear. At least for me, there's something that I kind of recently uh, became mindful of that they existed in the last, you know, few years or so. And I have to say it's, a, you know, a potentially a really good option for someone that doesn't want the disc or anything else, but just doesn't feel comfortable free bleeding. And by the way, if that is you super duper valid, um, 
I just do mine because it's so light. That said, um, I did order a pair of period underwear so that I could kind of put them to the test and see how it reacted with my vulva as a person with LS and just to kind of get a better idea as how they work and how good they are. I mean, I might not be able to comment from a perspective of someone with a super heavy flow, um, but if you are interested in kind of hearing about that, just definitely thumbs up this video and we can do a little period underwear review. Um, I will definitely do a review on my Instagram, so be sure to follow me over there. I am at the Lost Labia Chronicles on Instagram, so just be sure to follow my account, click that notification bell, and then when I post my little um, update, probably going to be to my stories, I might do a live about it and just have people come up and ask questions or share, you know, period related and LS related concerns, then, um, you could watch that there. So basically period underwear look a lot like normal underwear. And honestly, like the technology is really impressive. Uh, we've come a long way. Like I look at these websites and some of the models are beautiful. Like they do not look like what I thought period underwear would look like. Like some of them have lace and different colors and different patterns, different designs. Like there's so many options and I was really kind of blown away by that. And so, you know, different period companies, uh, period underwear companies will use different kind of materials, but in all cases, they're using materials with thousands of small micro fibers that work to wick moisture away from the vulva and to trap any liquids in this case to trap menstrual blood. And this helps and it kind of holds the blood in place so that it doesn't leak out of the underwear and onto your clothing or anything like that, which obviously we do want to avoid. So, you know, I've heard of a few people that tried period underwear with LS and absolutely loved them, but not too many. And I think that's more just a lot of people aren't super familiar with them, which is kind of what prompted me to try to get my own pair so that I could speak on a more personal level about them and about my experience with them. Um, so there are brands like NYX, but I think that for me, you know, one of my favorite brand options that I've seen out there so far is Revol. R-E-V-O-L, I might be pronouncing that wrong, undies. And I think what I love about them the most is they are so gender and body inclusive. It's so beautiful and so refreshing to see. And they also just have a wide array of products for different flows from super light to extremely heavy, very size inclusive, just so many options. Uh, so I did pick out a couple and hopefully they'll be in in a few more weeks, but who knows because I'm filming this over the holidays and the mail kind of comes to a, a bit of a halt during the holidays. But I look forward to testing those out and kind of sharing that with you. So this video was just a quick video about menstrual hygiene and menstrual care products for people with lichen sclerosis. But if you want me to do more content on periods and lichen sclerosis, um, please let me know in the comments so that I can note that down and make sure that that gets on my calendar so that I film that for you. And for that, we can talk about things like why do my symptoms flare around my period? What can I do to make this better? Because, you know, it sucks. We have a period every month. A lot of us have a period every month or frequently enough. How can I help manage that? You know, what, what's kind of out there for me? So I could take a deeper dive into that if folks are interested. So please do let me know in the comments so I can take note of that. Um, and then of course I did just want to leave you with a couple, you know, tips for managing your symptoms while you're on your period, because of course, you know, not all period care products will work for everyone. And I think that's really important, but also kind of frustrating because it does mean that sometimes we have to experiment a lot and try different things, which is frustrating primarily from a cost perspective because all of these products minus the free bleeding cost money so it can be really frustrating to buy like a new kind of tampon that are like organic cotton bleach free chlorine free unscented all these things you try it and it doesn't work then you try the pads then you try the and then you know it costs money so that can be really frustrating and i just wanted to acknowledge that it, it can be really frustrating with lichen sclerosis when we're talking about finding products that you know work for us and our bodies it it can cost a lot of money and take a lot of time and we invest a lot emotionally in this as well right like we put it in an order and we just hope so bad that this product will be the one and then if it's not it can be really upsetting so i just wanted to 
you know, acknowledge that uh, for you if that's kind of where you're at so that you don't kind of feel alone in that really not so fun feeling. A trick that I wanted to share with periods is that if you're on your period and you're symptomatic, it's going to be itchy and or painful kind of no matter what product you use, right? But let's talk about, you know, what can you do to maybe minimize some of that discomfort? So regardless of how you're bleeding, if there's blood that's getting on the vulva and it's kind of drying on the vulva, that can be a bit irritating for some of us. So what I recommend is that during your period, instead of wiping after you urinate with toilet paper, is to use a peri bottle. And I'll put an image of a peri bottle here. I've discussed this in my biopsy videos where I have a whole slew of tips and tricks for biopsies and also um, have a blog post on that as well. I will leave that linked if you are interested um, in the description box below. But they're essentially like a little squirt bottle, right? You fill it with water and then you kind of squeeze it and then water is gonna come out of the nozzle and gently clean and remove blood and urine and anything else off of the vulva so this can be a more gentle way to remove that blood and if your um if your flow is heavy you might find that you need to do that more often than not so maybe not just restricted to when you go to the bathroom you might want to kind of use that to remove you know blood buildup every hour if that's what you need to do and then a second tip after you remove it would be to apply a little bit of emollient to kind of just soften and keep that area kind of hydrated and protected and create a little bit of a barrier between the blood and your vulvar tissue because some of us with lichen sclerosis our vulvas especially when we're symptomatic can feel very very sensitive and reactionary to almost any you know change so that can be you know another good tip to kind of add on to that um, and finally, a third tip, you know, if you're experiencing discomfort from, you know, symptoms from your period, you can also use um, a product called Private Packs. I do have a video on Private Packs. I did a, a little interview video with the CEO and founder and owner of Private Packs, Suzanne. She's absolutely phenomenal. And if you haven't seen that video, definitely put that on your to watch list because Whew, she drops a ton of tips and tricks on how to use her product and there were so many things I had never even thought of and I've had her products for quite a while so it's definitely a must swatch but you can get that and essentially private packs are a non-toxic gel personal pad that are ergonomically created to fit the contours of a vulva so unlike a rigid ice pack they're actually flexible and really kind of mold to that vulvar shape so they kind of cover from the clitoral area all the way to the anal area and you can make them cold and into an ice pack by putting them in the freezer or you can make them warm by putting them for like 10 seconds in the microwave or submersing it in hot water to warm it up so the warmth can be really soothing to some people and kind of help relax some of the muscles so some people like to kind of apply that when they're on their period and they're fine there's a lot of irritation and then conversely there are folks like me that really like the cold when i'm feeling irritated or in pain so you know how i used to use them when i was symptomatic well i didn't use private packs back then but i used ice right so i would you know kind of make sure that I had a little barrier, like a little cloth, and I would wrap my ice pack in that and I would just kind of let it sit there for a little bit to give me some relief. So you can also play around with kind of heat and cold there to kind of see if that helps relieve some of the symptoms. That said, please always use a protective material. Never apply hot or cold to your vulva directly. Private Packs does come with a protective sleeve. If you don't use Private Packs, just put like honestly like a thin cloth or even a paper towel just something to protect that area all right so we have reviewed pads tampons discs and cups we have reviewed free bleeding and period underwear i spoke about what to avoid those namely being avoid panty liners avoid scented products avoid chlorinated or bleached products and avoid any product that makes things significantly worse for you and try to find an alternative that works with your body so that is it for this video i will catch you in the next one